Hello and welcome to Varm Vlog Solo. And today I start a series of videos that one might call OK Zoomer. I call them OK Zoomer because these are the things that I report on the most and rant about the most that get the response OK Boomer. Now, OK Zoomer is a little bit misleading because actually I don't think the trends I'm describing just affect people under the age of 25. In fact, I think in general, we're going to see these trends are gestalt. They show up in most generations, but disproportionately compound in younger people. That's a problem. Why it's a problem is a little bit more analysis than I'm willing to do just in this video. But we're going to start a series of discussions, picking up on the discussion about alienation and the discussion that I've done with heuristics and talk about general literacy. Now, we're going to use literacy here to mean primarily being able to read, comprehend, and understand, so decode and make meaning out of text. And also, in the broader sense, being able to apply that text in a way that is helpful and to engage with text in general. And text here we're going to take as meaning written text in a language. But we could also talk about general media literacy. So text like this YouTube video is a text. Like it is something that you process for information that it involves symbolic representation and the sound of my voice that you decode and make meaning out of. Now, that kind of basic linguistic and semiotic definition is probably not going to be sufficient for us, but let's get to a point where I started on a particular set of inquiry. Now, according to, according to Jason Cavalito, um, who is an author I follow on Twitter, publishing figures for 2022 were depressing, and we're just limiting ourselves to the U.S. In a country of 332 million people, only 28 books out of more than 300,000 titles sold more than 500,000 copies. And eight of those 28 books were by one author, Colleen Hoover. And if you get past the top 100 books, it gets even more depressing. The average bestseller right now sells 2,000 copies. And almost all those sales are to communities, typically book clubs, author social media followers, and internet groups. And anecdotally, I'm just going to add to Jason here, uh, I sell well for a poet with my poetry often selling out, but in print runs of like two and three hundred. And about three-fourths of those are to people who follow me on the podcast, even though my podcast rarely ever touches on arts. Why? Because despite the fact that I engage in literary arts, and a lot of people engage in literary arts. Um, it's not what people come to me for, and those shows have a low viewership, so I quit talking about it as much. Back to what Calipolito said. Because publishers put out too many titles, we are dealing with 300,000 formally published in the United States alone, and 4 million if you count all self-published books. Choice paralysis sends readers back to familiar titles. Furthermore, because of the ease of printing, back catalogs have expanded every year. So new, new books are competing with all books that priorly existed. This is also true in music, by the way. I've talked with uh, Jason Miles of This Is Revolution about this. And what you see is not only now are you competing with all recent music on something like Spotify, but all music ever. You might ask yourself, well, are libraries uh, eating up a lot of these purchases? And, you know, how, many, how much is this going to libraries? How many of these books are circulating around being read through library cards and not being bought? It's hard to say, but Calavito points out that there's 117,000 117, libraries roughly in the United States. Most of them are public school libraries that are not biting significant numbers of adult titles, period. Um, almost every public school has a library 
So when you whittle out public schools, you're down to about 9,000 public libraries and 3,000 college libraries. That's not going to be a significant input to overall sales, which, by the way, is why academic books cost so much money. They don't have that many buyers. You put out a book by Brill, it's going to mostly go to college libraries. So they're going to charge those college libraries about $120 a pop. The college libraries can pay for it because they're on all kinds of funding lines and tuition's ridiculous. And what about bestsellers? Well, bestseller after Amazon's become a meaningless uh, distinction. One, it's marketing fluff anyway. And two, um, the Amazon algorithm will make new categories just so that a few new books can be a bestseller in it. So according to Cavalito, one of his books was a bestseller and it only sold 45 copies. The 2000 figure appears in various publications and the big five staffers tell me that selling about 1600 books is successful. As a side note, when I worked for zero, if we sold a thousand or 2000 of a book, uh, we did well, but we also had to sell at least 500 copies of a book to really make money. Now you might go, well, that's just, you know, market data. Well, let me give you some more data. This is from uh, Cecily Aaron Hill reporting on the annual arts basic survey. Americans are increasingly unlikely to read literature. So found the National Endowment for the Arts. Measuring the way adult Americans interact and engage in the arts, from reading books to playing instruments to attending a performance, this year's survey shows only 43% of Americans read novels, short stories, or plays not required for work or school. Although the NEA's research includes narrative nonfiction and newer storytelling genres like blog posts and podcasts, the research suggests that, that reading rigorous literature may shrink away to nothing with fewer and fewer Americans uh, taking any time to explore the magic of literary works. The NEA numbers are particularly striking as they break down along gender, race, and education line. Women constitute nearly 60% of all literary readers. People who identify as white are more than likely to read literature. 50% of them have engaged in literary reading as compared to 28.7% of those who identify as black and even fewer of those who identify as Hispanic. And where this is most striking, whereas 68.1 and 58.5% of, of people who gr have graduate or bachelor's degree respectively read literature each year, only 30% of high school graduates did. Those who have some high school are even less likely to pick up a novel with a scant 20% engaging in reading. But actually, to be honest, those stats are better than I thought. I will go back and forth to a report picking up uh, from Inside Higher Ed, which I will go back to later. According to a 2021 pupil, roughly a quarter of American adults, including 38% of Hispanic adults, 25% of Black adults, and 20% of white adults. So they haven't read it with a book in whole or in part in the last year, whether in parent or in electronic or in audio form. This is even true of the 11% of adults with a bachelor's or other advanced degree. So 11% of those with college degrees are not reading. These figures have tripled since 1978. Now we'll come back to that in a minute because higher ed says some things I disagree with. Um, is this just in the United States? No, it's not. According to the Institute of Multisensory Education, the trends are global. Even with increased attention from polymakers and the public, literacy trends are predicted to stay stagnant in middle and high income countries over the next decade. In Francophone African countries, literacy rates are expected to drop by nearly a third by 2030. Literacy is a bit of a trigger word in today's landscapes. Between Michigan's read by third grade retention law and the emphasis on media literacy and challenges of adult literacy across the world, some argue that we are in a global crisis. It's true that literacy rates have been trending up for the last two decades, going from 83% to 91%. However, according to UNESCO, there are still an estimated 
101 million children in primary and lower secondary school that lack minimum proficiency in reading. And what's more I've opening is that 750 million adults cannot read or write in simple sentences in their home language. We have to ask ourselves, why is reading declining? And some of the answers are obvious, but we're going to have to also go to why is literacy declining? And in ways that affect not just parsing information from text, but parsing information more generally. Now, this is where I get the OK Boomer response. So, OK, Zoomer, let's talk about this. Let's look at the stats in America. According to the Hatcher Report, more than a dozen studies have documented that students on average have made sluggish progress during the pandemic. Estimates on how sluggish varies. Consulting firm McKinsey and Company calculated that U.S. students had lost the equivalent of almost half of a school year in reading instruction. Analysis of test scores in California and South Carolina found that students had lost a third of a year in reading. National analysis of test scores of 1.5 million students calculated that spring of 2021 in each grade scored 3 to 6 percent lower than on write and lose tests in the past, such as a measure of academic process our math than they did in 2019. Reading achievement has fallen in the state that ranks the highest in the nation in reading, Massachusetts. Students in grades three through eight slid six points in reading on state tests in the spring of 2021 compared to the spring of 2019. But what is more roaring is these trends, according to the same report, go back longer than that. They are not caused by the pandemic. And that is shown up in these adult buying uh, patterns and all these other adult literacy things we're looking at. Um, what we see is worrying. While math scores have only started dropping recently, literacy scores have been dropping for 10 years. The Hetcher Report talks about this. What we see more and more is that literacy has been declining significantly in eighth graders for about a decade. And we are not seeing those gains made up in college students. And now we head back over to this to what the um, Inside Higher Education report says. A special concern to academics are reports that among college students, according to the faculty survey of student engagement, are increasingly unwilling to complete assigned readings. So we just have evidence that even people going to school that require readings are not reading. Now, I think the, the Journal of uh, Inside Higher Education, excuse me, uh, is not doing a great job when they break this down. So I'll tell you what they have to say about this. Anxieties about declining rates of literacy are, of course, nothing new. Fears of declension and sliding back are part and parcel of the literacy myth that the great historian of literacy, Harvard J. Gaff, has described. The myth insists that literacy's value can't be underestimated, that literacy, or like the advent of agriculture cities, transformed human life in fundamentally important ways, that literacy spread was not only key to economic development, democratic practices, and upper mobility, but promoted the growth of logical reasoning and rational argument and the development of higher aesthetics and moral sensibilities. To speak of the literacy myth is not, of course, to say there's no connection between literacy, economic success, labor force attainment, and skill. As a side note, yeah, no shit, there's, there's a connection between the three. Um, rather than to say the belief that literacy has become an article of faith and therefore any perceived climb in literacy is regarded as a threat to the individual well-being in the, neck in the nation's economic and moral future. So you literally have academics now telling people not to worry about general declines in literacy. And yet, this is the conclusion that the Inside Higher educa ed Education comes to. Has literacy actually declined? Likely not. Those kinds of readings seem to have shifted, though it appears that the kind of text of sustained engagement with lengthy and demanding text was identified with reading in the late 18th century onward has declined. 
that much current reading takes the form of briefer bursts of scanning and panning, and the growing share of rent communication takes the form of brief text. Okay, now this is true, but it was truer 10 years ago. I have read studies, and I'm going to try to find them, that indicated that there was a first panic about reading uh, in the mid-aughts, and then in the early aught teens, it indicated that actually millennials read more than Gen Xers and baby boomers, but they read smaller texts. However, recent stuff doesn't indicate that at all. And it makes sense. Are you reading blogs anymore? The, the most prominent singular text-based form of social media now is Twitter. But what is more worrying is that basic literacy is tied to the ability of adults to model longer reading text. Going back to the Hatcher Report, researchers are also zeroing in on the changes in home reading habits. In student surveys that accompany the, NA, the NAEP reading assessments, the percentage of eighth graders who said they read 30 minutes or more a day, excluding homework, declined 4% from 2017 to 2019. They were less than likely to say they talked about books, or went to the library, or even considered reading one of their favorite activities. I can anecdotally back this up. I have students telling me who are in creative writing classes that they don't read. This is also what the Hetchers says. While it's too early to blame the distraction of texting, TikTok, and Minecraft, more time reading doesn't necessarily produce stronger readers. Researchers sometimes find instances, such as in Mississippi, where students read less, but their scores actually increase slightly. In other states, such as where islands, where reading habits were more stable, but scores slid. What are we to make of this? I don't really know, but there's other trends that we have to worry about. The way to generally encourage and deal with and, and create literate people in the past was through the humanities. The humanities has been in decline for a long time. I'm going to quote Jerry Cohn of Why, Evolutionary, uh, Why Evolution is True. To go into this, all around them, the humanities burn. The number of jobs in English advertised on the annual MLA job list has declined 55% since 2008, adjuncts now being all but a quarter of college instructors generally. Three-fourths of all college instruction is by adjuncts. Just want you to think about that. Whole departments are being extrapolated by administrations with utilitarian visions. From 2013 to 2016, college has cut... 641 foreign language programs. Meanwhile, the number of English majors at most universities continue to swoon. None of them show any sign of relenting. In fact, all the trappings of extinction event has set in that will alter English and the rest of humanities irrevocably, and no one nuts what will, what will leave in its wake. What is certain is that the momentum impelling it is far past halting. Behind the momentum lies an advanced avarice of universities, but also the determination of politicians and pundits to do credit humanistic thinking, which plainly threatens them. They have brought it on a tipping point. The stories they have told about these disciplines, of their pointlessness, of their hollowness, of anything lacking entrepreneurial value, have won over the stories of the humanists themselves have told or not told. And I believe that's true. Very few people are advocating even for literacy anymore. As we saw in the, in the Inside Higher Education report, all this will be linked in the show notes, by the way, the historians are saying we shouldn't worry about this. But you might go, well, people are more informed than ever. They get their stuff off YouTube. Well, this is where media literacy comes in. We normally assume that it's older adults with this problem. But according to The Hill, a 2016 Stanford study of History Education Group found that across middle school, high school, and college students, young adults' ability to reason about information on the internet can be summed up in one word, bleak. That's despite these young people be considered, being considered digital natives, able to seamlessly toggle between Facebook and Twitter while texting a friend. However, Sam Weinberg, professor of education and history at Sanford and one of the leading authors of the study, says changing America's biggest problem is using skills that were once developed in analog age to understand a digital medium doesn't work. The same study indicates that 50 per 5 percent of students cannot access the reliability of information they encounter on the internet. And it's slightly worse amongst older people, as has been often reported. But the thing is, 
it's bad across the board. Now, there are uh, there is evidence and there are some studies, um, and I'm going to link two of them, one from Nature, one from Sage, that indicate that some interventions could help. But right now, in general, the push for media literacy requires people to be literate in general. And that general literacy is declining. And it's declining worldwide. But even in, in the developed world, it is stagnating at best. The gaps of people who engage in it are going all over the place. And we have to ask ourselves, how are we supposed to make a political subject an informed member of politics when we're going to have trouble educating them on things they need to do basic functions? Do they really st need, still need to do that with basic functions? Why does it seem like the academic institutions tasked with ensuring this seem to be making excuses for it are finding reasons to brush off the findings of their own research. What about capitalism seems to be creating an overproduction of literary information. There's more information available now than ever and fewer and fewer people having the capacity to do anything with it. I know I sound like a prophet of doom lately, but perhaps people should start looking at this stuff. And to give you the ability to look at this stuff, look at all the articles and reports I put in the show notes. S start exercising your ability to double check me. Thank you. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell. We have a Patreon. You can find us on podcast apps for the interview shows. Have a great day.